Hello, I'm Justin Somper, author of the Vampirates books, and I am thrilled to be here today on Moon Lane TV to tell you about the books, the story, and to introduce you to some of my favourite characters. Now, the first thing you need to know about the story is it's set in the future, about 500 years into the future. Now, there's been global warming and the sea levels have risen, and that means there's a lot less land and a lot more ocean. And the ocean is governed by the Pirate Federation because there's this new dawn of piracy. So the oceans are ruled by the Pirate Federation. The seas are teeming with pirate ships. And there's at least one other mysterious kind of a ship that's been sailing largely undetected since time began. Now, the heroes of our story are twins, Grace and Connor Tempest. They're teenagers and they have grown up in a small coastal town called Crescent Moon Bay on the east coast of Australia. They live in a lighthouse there and they are brought up by their single parent dad, Dexter Tempest. He's the lighthouse keeper. Now, early on in the story, very sadly, Dexter unexpectedly dies. And so the twins are orphaned and they decide that they're going to leave Crescent Moon Bay and start a new life somewhere else. They take their dad's old yacht out. Um, they've sailed it before. They know what they're doing. But Grace and Connor get caught in a terrible and sudden storm. The ship starts breaking up around them. Grace and Connor are each thrown into the ocean, into the cold, churning water. They're separated from each other and they are fighting for their lives. Now, Connor and Grace each come very close to drowning, but they're rescued just in the nick of time. But they're each rescued by very different people from very different kinds of ships. And in many ways, the people who rescue Grace and Connor are going to write the next chapters of what their lives are going to be like. Connor is rescued by a passing pirate ship. It's called the Diablo. Uh, as you may know, that means the devil in Spanish. And this is a very celebrated pirate ship captained by Malucco Wraith. Now, he's a very old school, over the top pirate captain, kind of a combination of pirate royalty meets rock and roll. Uh, Malucco comes from a very legendary pirate dynasty. He has two brothers, Barbro and Porfirio, who will also come into the story, and they're both pirate captains as well. Malucco is quite an unusual character, and one of our early clues to that is the fact that his pet snake, um, Scrimshaw, lives in his hair. Now, Malucco is an inveterate rule breaker, and I mentioned the Pirate Federation before. Malucco doesn't abide by all of the rules of the Pirate Federation, and that puts him into conflict with the deputy captain of his ship. And her name is Wu Cheng Li, and she's a very different kind of a pirate. Now, Cheng Li is just 17 years old, and the fact that she is deputy captain of the Diablo already is because she has graduated from Pirate Academy with flying colours. This is an elite school run by the Pirate Federation to groom the best of the best pirates to be the captains of the future. Now, Cheng Li is incredibly ambitious. She's incredibly brutal. She wears twin katana on her back at all times. Those are her weapons of choice. Her father, Wu Chang Ko, was a legendary pirate. So that's a lot for her to live up to. Um, but as I say, she's very ambitious and she's going to give it a good old go. Now, in many ways, Connor is well suited to life on board a pirate ship. Obviously, he's desperately worried about Grace. Did she survive the shipwreck? And if so, where is she and when will he see her again? Um, but Connor adapts well to life on board the pirate ship. He's quite skilled physically. He was always good at games at school, so that's quite useful. And he's also a really good team player. And that's appreciated uh, by the captain and by the rest of the crew. And he starts making friends really quickly. He makes a good friend in Bart Pierce, who is one of the younger pirates on board the ship. And he's also taken under the wing by Cutlass Kate, Kate Morgan, who is in charge of weapons and attack strategy on board the Diablo. 
and at one point Connor asks Bart and Kate to give him sword fighting lessons and they together introduce him to what it means to be a real pirate. So Connor is worried about what's happened to Grace and has she survived the shipwreck? Well, good news, bad news. She has survived. She's on board another ship. And at first sight, this ship looks pretty similar to the Diablo. Although now I come to think of it, the deck boards of this ship are painted or maybe just stained red. Um, the crew only really emerges after dark and the captain is proving pretty elusive. Now, you might be picking up some clues and Grace is picking up some clues and she realises that she is on board this ship of vampire pirates or vampirates. Now, pretty terrifying prospect, uh, I'm sure you would agree, but I think it's real testament to Grace's character that although she is frightened, mostly she is fascinated and she wants to find out about what is going on on board this ship and how does it work. Now, the first character who she comes into contact with is Lorcan Fury. He's the young Irish pirate who rescues her from the ocean. He's 17 years old, but I guess I should clarify that he's been 17 for several hundred years. Um, but Lorcan is very kind, he seems very charming, and he really does seem to have Grace's best interests at heart. So she decides that at least for the time being, she is going to give him the benefit of the doubt. One of the next characters on board the Nocturne that Grace befriends is Darcy Flotsam. Now, Darcy is a really unusual character. By day, she is the ship's figurehead. So she takes the form of this wooden sculpture with big painted eyes um, that is attached to the front of the ship. And she watches the ocean, scanning them for signs of trouble during the daylight hours. But as darkness falls, Darcy once more takes the form of a living being and she dives into the ocean, has a refreshing swim, stretches out those limbs that have been rigid all day and she climbs back onto the deck of the Nocturne and she sounds the nightfall bell, which is the bell that signals to the rest of the crew that it is time to be up and about. Now, quite quickly, Darcy and Grace become really good friends. And one of the things that bonds them is that Darcy tells Grace her crossing story. And that's the story of her life before she became a vampire and also the moment when she crossed from life through death to the other side. And Grace is so intrigued by the crossing story that Darcy tells her that she's quite hungry to know crossing stories of the other vampires. And helpfully, they're quite eager to tell them. Now, Sidorio is one of the vampires who thinks he's got the best crossing story of all. And actually, you know, he might well be right. Sidorio comes from Roman times originally, and he got caught up in a group of pirates that were operating out of a base called Cilicia. And when he was young, he and a group of his friends kidnapped a young Julius Caesar and held him for hostage. Um, but Caesar turned the tables on his captors and tricked them and ultimately killed them. And Sidorio uh, wears this encounter with Caesar as a real badge of pride. Now, in each of the new editions of Vampirates, you're going to find a bonus crossing story interview with Grace and one of the characters uh, at the back of the books and at the back of the first uh, new book, Demons of the Ocean, is an extended version of that crossing story interview with Grace and Sidorio. One of the key characters who Grace comes to terms with on board the Nocturne is the vampire captain himself. Now he's a very mysterious character. He is covered in a cloak, his hands are covered in gloves, he wears a very tightly fitting mesh mask. So she can see the indentations for his eyes and his nose, um, but she can't see beyond that. Um, and she comes to wonder, as she spends time in his presence, whether actually there is a human face underneath that mask, or maybe there is simply a void. Well, it's going to take Grace a little bit of time to discover exactly what is beneath the mask. Um, and that's just one of the many, many secrets that lie aboard the Nocturne and within the world of vampires. 
So that's a whistle stop introduction to you to some of the story and setup and my favourite characters uh, within Vampirates. But before I go today, I want to recite for you the Vampirate Shanty. Now, I say recite, I'm not going to sing it because it may be that you've got a few fragile ornaments um, or glassware around and we don't want to shatter any of those. So um, I will simply do my best to recite it for you. I'll tell you a tale of vampires, a tale as old as true. Yes, I'll sing you a song of an ancient ship and its mighty fearsome crew. I'll sing you a song of an ancient ship that sails the ocean's blue, that haunts the ocean's blue. The vampire ship has tattered sails. They flap like wings in flight. The captain, they say he wears a veil so as to curtail your fright at his death pale skin and his lifeless eyes and his teeth as sharp as night. Yes, the captain, they say he wears a veil and his eyes never see the light. So you better be good, child, good as gold, as good as good can be, or I'll turn you into the vampires and wave you out to sea. Yes, you better be good, child, good as gold, because look, can you see? There's a dark ship in the harbour tonight and there's room in the hold for thee, plenty of room for thee. Well, if pirates are bad and vampires are worse, I pray that as long as I be, that though I sing, kind of, a vampire, I never one shall see. Yes, if pirates are danger and vampires are death, I'll extend my prayers for thee, that thine eyes never see a vampire, and they never lay a hand on thee. Well, there we are. As I say, hopefully I didn't shatter uh, any of your fragile ornaments. Um, with the vampire at shanty. As you can see, there are some clues within that shanty to things that may be happening within the story. Um, it's been really fantastic to have this opportunity to talk to you today about vampires. It's a series of six books. They all take place um, over the course of a single year and Grace and Connor, who I've introduced you to, are the heroes across all of those books. So thanks so much to Moon Lane TV for having me here today. And I really hope you guys enjoy your voyages with the vampires. See you soon.